So this is part three of Clementine. Um, it's two long borders. As you can see, there's flowers and there's a bird. And some lovely uh, little berries. Um, in this particular um, video, I'll show you how I make these blue flowers. The orange flowers, how I make the bird, um, the circle flower, and how to make long stems, um, which are quarter inch, as well as the one eighth inch stem with the berries. The first thing I'm going to show you is how to cut bias stems using a fat quarter. This way you get really long stems because for part three and subsequent parts, you are going to need longer stems. And then I'll show you as well how to join them together to make longer stems. Uh, before you start, make sure that your fat quarter is a square. Uh, you'll need your rotary cutter as well as a 12 inch ruler. Okay, these are what you need for this. So you lay your fat quarter on your cutting mat and you take that end, that point there, and you bring it down to meet the other point. So you fold your fat quarter diagonally to get a triangle. Sorry, I can't get the whole uh, thing into the camera view but we'll work with what we have now when you've done this triangle you take this end from here and you join it to this point on the opposite side just like that okay we can just straighten it out there so we've got a triangle that looks like this then what we do is we take this end and we Take it straight across to join this point here. So you have something that looks like this. So now we're ready to cut. So I'm going to flip it over so that I'm going to start cutting from this side. Now the first thing I have to do is I have to just make sure that I cut off all the folds there. So we'll just make a nice cut make sure you have a sharp blade there we go okay <clears throat> now i've got a formula that i work with instead of cutting five eighths of an inch and then moving them out of the way i've worked this out and i cut five inches of my fabric and then i work backwards now if you want to stop the video now and just make notes and take down all these measurements it's going to help you in the future so my first cut is at five inches. So, okay. And then the next cut I can see is four and three eighths. So I'll just count one, two, three. So I'll put it right up there. And that's my first cut. Next one is three and three quarters. So I'll move that back. Next cut is three and one eighth. Next cut is two and a half. Next cut is one and seven eighths. You have to have a really sharp rotary cutter. Next one is one and a quarter. And then five eighths and you can see we've cut all these bias stems and we didn't have to move them out of the way and then when you've done that you continue cutting this one as well okay and you will see that the bias stems are long much longer than you would if you had oops see this one didn't work, so where's my root? I'll just cut it with a pair of scissors. Yep, 
they are so much longer you can see that yep okay so the next thing i'll show you is how i join them together and how i push the seams and why i push the seams in the direction that i do so this is how i join my stems together so i've got to make sure that they're both meet um, at that angle so I put them right sides together then what I do is I usually use a stick of glue because I find it so much easier and I just put some glue there and then I'll flip this around and I will stick it there now I've got to make sure that's a quarter of an inch because that's how wide my seam allowance is going to be so I stick it there and I'll take it to my iron, to my machine and I'll just sew that. Um, I've done that, so I'll show you how I sewed it. Um, here we go. So I've just run a line of stitches there. And then I, when I um, iron my seams, I push them all to one side. So you can see. I've pushed this seam to there. I make sure the next seam is pushed in the same direction. Okay, so they all should face in one direction. This is because it makes it much easier when you're using the clover bias maker to pull it through. If you find that one stem is in the wrong direction, it's going to get caught in your clover bias maker. This is how I do my bias stems. So for the quarter inch bias stems, I cut my bias stems at five eighths of an inch. I cut them and I make, I cut quite a few and I have a pile here because I like to prep plenty of stems and then I can use them over and over again. I used Best Press, which is the spray starch. I used the Clover Bias Maker, which is the either pale green or the bright green is the quarter of an inch. And I have a pin with a metal head because a pin with a plastic head is going to melt the plastic head is going to melt when you iron on it which i found out early on so the first thing i do is i make a pile put a pile of my stems there and i spray starch there are two ways of spray starching as far as i'm concerned one is and one is i'm going to do the way so and I like to make them just a little bit damp because then when I iron them they're going to and make sure they're completely dry they're going to sit beautifully in wherever I store them uh, with perfectly turn under seam allowances okay now we're ready to insert the um, bias stem into the metal into the clover bias maker now you know floppy won't go in so we've got to iron it to stiffen it up so i just iron the tip make sure it's dry because it has been starched and it's going to be stiff enough that i can insert it the clover bias maker instructions somehow tells you to turn your bias maker upside down which to me is upside down to them that's the right side up to me that's the right side up and that's the way we're going to learn how to do it so you can see how stiff that is now. Yes, so I do a bit of a, a pinch it there and I insert it. And you can see it in there. You can, in a little slit there, you can see the, the um, bars. And with my pin, I just push it forward, just like that, until it's peeping out there. Yep, you can see it peeping there. Now I take it, I pull it out a little bit and I pin it to my ironing board and I make sure that I pin it so that it's really strong in there and it's not going to come out. Make sure your bias is straight and it's not going to be twisting. So I drape my hand, put my hand under it and I drape it over my, the palm of my hand. And then I drape it over my fingers again and I hold that end there. I put my iron sideways there and I push, 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 stop. I go back and forth because I want it to be really 
dry. Now, I never pull this without the iron being next to it. So always push it with the iron back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, all the way back and forth, back and forth. Okay, then I just hold the end and I just pull it a little bit and I make sure I go back and forth again. And you get a beautiful stem with the seam allowances turn under and because it's dry it's not going to unravel when you store it. The reason I like it with the metal head on top is that the bias, uh, the seam allowances go underneath. If you had it with that bit on top, the seam allowances come on the top and it gets caught in the iron. I hope you like that. This is how I would do a 1 8 inch stem if you don't have the 1 8 inch clover bias maker, which are now extremely rare and very difficult to find. So I get a... Um, quarter inch stem that I've already prepared and I'll just open out one seam allowance and I'll just press that out just one seam allowance okay when I've done that I'm going to cut that seam allowance away you don't have to be very accurate because you know stems are not straight have little wobbly bits on them. Okay, once I've cut that out, then I go back to my ironing board. I'll press that seam allowance under like that and I'll press it down. So keep on pushing it over and pressing it. I make the short 1 8 inch stems, they're easier to um, make. Once you've done that, you can flip it over and give it one more press. And there you have it, you've got a 1 8 inch stem. That's it. The circle flower is one of my favorite flowers and I do it quite often in quite a lot of my patterns and it consists of either six petals and a center or five petals and a center this particular one has got five petals and a center so what you'd be doing now is you're starting to glue all your pieces on what I would do is because I have such a long pattern piece it's a long border and you also need a long background fabric strip so i'll go i'll put my pattern on a desk that's quite long and then i'll put my background fabric over the pattern and i'll pin it in strategic places and i'll put the pins where there is no pattern for example like there 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 so i pin it i don't put too many pins but enough to hold the two pieces together that way, if you've got a small light box, you can move your pattern and your background fabric together without the fabric moving off your background. Okay. Now for today's purpose, I'm just going to be using a small square of fabric to show how I would glue my um, circle flower on. Now I've got all my pieces here, including my center. So what I would do is, I would turn my light box on and the first circle that's going to go on I'll do that one which will be the pink one so what I do is I'll put a little dot of glue I'll do this on on my background fabric which sometimes makes it easier and I stick that there now you will see that all the circles overlap each other so the next piece of glue will next not piece of glue and next bit of glue will be there make sure that doesn't come off and I'll put some there and then I'll stick that over there like that okay and I just want to hold it for a little while because it seems to be coming off the fabric 
and then the next one is a little bit there and there and stick that on and there and there stick that And there. Now you'll notice that this blue is going to be on top there, but it goes under the pink one. So we'll put it on top first. Oh, this one's coming off. Hang on. It does get a little bit messy. There we go. So we'll stick that down there. And I'm just going to lift the pink one and put some glue there on the blue and stick it okay now you've only got the center left we'll just put some glue all around here and we'll stick that into place now all you've got to do is you sew from here all the way around to there jump in there all the way around to there jump in there all the way around there jump in there all the way around there jump in there all the way around there jump underneath and sew your circle when it came to the bird um, I decided that I would prepare the bird before I stuck it onto my background fabric now by that I mean that the bird had so many little pieces to it that I found it was easier if I glued all the pieces together before I sewed it, before I glued it onto my background fabric. Now with the bird as well, there are some curved lines, which I would do needle turn applique, and there are some straight lines, which I call straight line applique, which I draw the lines with a pencil, and then I press them under with an iron so that I don't need to needle turn. For example, I'll show you this particular wing feather. Um, I drew the line there with a pencil. I finger pressed it and then I took it to my ironing board and I pressed that down. Same as the blue one. Again, you can see I've pressed under just one seam allowance. Now, um, where the dotted line is, is where I cut that piece of fabric. And then the uh, brown tail feather, I've turned under both seam allowances. As well as with the wing, I just, that's the straight line applique there. So I turn under that seam allowance and I pressed it using an iron. Now, we'll put the body together first. So I'll just put a little bit of glue there. And I'll just make sure that I stick that bird in the right position. I put the glue there so the bird body doesn't shift when I'm putting the tail the wing onto it. I've got some glue there. And I'll start from the point there because that makes it much easier. And then I just press it down. And I'm going to remove it and I'm going to do my tail feathers. Okay. So the first tail feather that goes down is the orange. So I'll put a little bit of glue there so it doesn't shift. And I'll stick that down there. And I can see where my straight line is. So I align the straight lines. Then another bit of glue there. And we'll put our blue tail feather down there like that. And then finally... The brown one I think that might be a bit wrong we'll just move that down a little bit yep sorry I'll just move it down there let's see and then the brown one will go there okay then we just put some glue here and we'll stick the bird body to the tail feathers Make sure we get all our lines well. Hang on. Just, just a little bit. Yeah, there we go. That's it. Okay, once that's done, you can slowly peel it off. And you can see it's ready to go onto your background fabric. So, 
you're going to have this big long background fabric we'll pretend this is what it is so we put our background fabric over and when we come time to glue our bird on we're just going to put some glue just like that there and i'm going to find the straight lines because they seem to align the best there there just turn that under and we've got the body the whole bird stuck to the background fabric so now what i would do first i would sew first is what's underneath so you'd start with the orange tail feather you sew on that straight line needle turn that so on the straight line on the blue tail feather needle turn underneath so on the brown needle turn and i would stop there okay then I would sew my bird body. Then I would come back. I would sew underneath, under the, the sew the wing, turn that under, stop there. And then I would grab the brown and the yellow and turn them in together. Okay, just, and sew the, sorry, you just don't, don't need to turn, you just need to sew it down. I have done this video, this is about the 10th go, so... <laughs> If I say a few funny words, you will have to excuse me. Thanks. The orange flower. What I would do is, I would, um, first of all, put my orange fabric onto my light box, turn my light box on, and draw all those lines. Yeah. Then I'll take my pattern, and I'll just... Stick it on my light box like that. Um, I just use a bit of sticky tape to make sure it doesn't shift. So the best way uh, to do it is to sew this petal first. Stick this petal and this petal first and sew them. Then stick that one and that one and sew it. And then this one last. Okay. So we'll just put some glue on the petal. And I'll just... Stick it there and there. And here's some glue. And just stick it there and there. Now, I don't want to have to come back to my um, pattern and find out where the other petals stick. So I'll just draw them. Just draw an outline of them there and there. And there. That's all I need. So once I've sewn those two, I don't have to come back here. I've got those lines. I'll just get my next petals. I'll stick them there and there, sew them, and then come back and st stick the fifth one and sew it down. And then you sew your center circle. I'm now going to focus on the blue flower. Now I've chosen a light blue fabric because... Um, I did the dark blue and you couldn't see the lines or the stitching properly. So I've drawn my lines with a friction pen and I clip the inside points. I clip, I'll bring it up close so you can see, I clip almost to the line, like, you know, like one thread away if you can see that. Okay. Now, if I clip too much, or if you clip too much, and your little petal is going to be smaller than mine, no one's going to know, so don't stress out about it. Now, I put some glue at the back, and I'm just going to do it that way, and stick it to my, fab my background fabric. Okay. Now, when I start, this is... Um, Pretty similar to when you do leaves except that the point here is a wider point so it's a lot easier to handle than when you have a sharp point for a leaf so I'll start there and I turn under now I'm using black thread because I want you to be able to see what I'm doing but of course you will be using um, either the same color of thread as your flower or neutral colored thread and you know, I only turn under as far as my nail, which is almost the whole petal anyway. 
and I do my needle turn stitch and I come up in the fold right come up right on the fold if you come up past the fold if you come up somewhere here you will see your stitch we'll take one more stitch and then we'll come out at the point you always get these things happening when you don't want them to let me just push that in okay and I come up at the point and I'm going to take my anchor stitches as I do when I do my points on leaves which I think is another video there and then I flip it around and I do my clip Clip and clip. Okay. Now, this needle is quite is a ten and it's quite strong. It's not bendy, so I can turn this under easily. Just turn it, push it under like that. I keep, I hold that. What I've turned under, I hold that with my nail. I put my needle into my background fabric at the point, and I come up just a teeny bitty bit away because I want to catch any frayed edges there and then I continue okay and I'm going to continue to the inside point now for the inside point I put my twist my my hand like that I come there and I'm going to push that and I kind of push it all in okay and that way and then I also grab anything there and I push that in and I'll just get to that point and I think if you when you're watching this video if you're watching it on a phone or an iPad uh, you can actually just increase the screen and you can see it really close up. So I've been told. Now, I come up just past what I've clipped. So just a little bit past that point and I'll take one stitch in right in the point. Okay. Then I flip it over. Now, here... I went in and I pushed it that way now here I'm going to turn that under and I'm gonna push it back in like this yeah there I'll take one more stitch at the point and I come up a little bit away and that's it and I continue now when you have the right colored thread you won't see that point in there the inside point which I call sometimes cleavage which is much easier to describe and everybody understands what that means so that's what it is now I'm going to show you how I do points and I'm going to use a leaf shape so you can see that I've cut the leaf shape with a scant quarter of an inch seam allowance the next thing I have to do is I have to glue that onto my background fabric. So I flip it over and I use the Karen, sorry, the Roxanne's glue. And I'm just going to do a little squiggly line down the middle, just like that. I try not to get that squiggly line too close to the seam allowances because when you needle turn, it will be stuck onto the background fabric. If that happens, you just peel it off. It's no big deal. So we put that there. Okay, now we're ready to sew. So I've got my size 10 needle. And I've got my pin there because sometimes that's a little bit bendy. And I'm using black thread because I want you to be able to see my stitches. Now I work away from me. 
and when I do a point or have any points on any of my shapes I always approach the point so I wouldn't start there all the way around and then get there because that wouldn't give me much room there to play with so I'd start there and go towards the point so now the needle turn stitch I use the point and the shaft of the needle to turn under and my nail on my left hand is very important left thumb is very important and if you're left-handed you just you it's reversed so I turn under that way and you can see as soon as I turn under I grab and I put my nail down and I hold it down and I only turn as far as my nail now I come up from underneath and I come up in the fold you can see and I'll just explain in a minute why so I come up there now if I take my stitch forward you will see it so I take it straight across by that I mean that I will take my needle and I put it just under the fold where I came up I take it under my background fabric and I come back up in the fold just like that okay one stitch I turn under now you can see this glue there that's what I meant so just peel it off so turn it under take my needle just under the fold under the background fabric and come out in the fold that way your stitch disappears and you can see that I'm going to take it all the way up there now if you find that you can see your stitches it just means that you're coming up just outside the fold just on the top there so again under the fold under the background fabric and in the fold now you'll notice that I take my stitches are a scant quarter of an inch because I want to finish my project next week not next year and I know the quilt police are going to say something but who cares so back under there and I come up right at the point now I take what I call anchor stitches meaning I take two stitches sideways so that's one there, like that now when you have neutral colored thread you won't see these stitches or if you have thread the same color as your shape too okay now I'm going to turn my work around because I want to go back that way I put my needle there so it's out of the way make sure my thread is out of the way and I grab my scissors and I go snip clip sorry clip flip clip by that I mean clip flip and see that little tail there I cut that out as well that reduces all the bulk when you try and turn your point so I turn my point in two motions I move that away there oh I'll need it yeah so the first one let's put that needle back is I turn my point under so just like that I'll turn it under and you can see I've turned straight under then I twist my hand and I sideways with my pin I push that in just like that and I grab it with my thumbnail now I'll just pull the needle a little bit oh, sorry the thread a little bit I put my needle into the background fabric at the point and then I come up just a little bit away because I just want to make sure that I've tucked in all those all the seam allowances and any stray um, threads so fraying bits that sometimes happen and there we go so that's it uh, I'm going to work to the point and if I learn how to splice this I will do it if I don't you're going to have to watch the whole thing but I will do a jibber jabber while I'm doing it um, you can see the black line and that's because I want you to be able to see where I'm sewing so I'm going to do one stitch where I come up 
not in the fold so you'll see the effect of that you can see that stitch there so it looks pretty good it looks okay to me i try not to stress out too much because in the bigger scheme of the whole quilt no one's going to notice one little stitch on the top or even 20 stitches on the top so don't stress out now i mentioned before that i take at least a scant quarter of an inch distance between my needle turn stitches but when i come to do curves i tend to take smaller stitches okay now we can get there uh, we'll do one more and just make them a little bit smaller not that much and I put my thumbnail there and I try to follow the curve of that nail. It's not much of a nail, but it's good enough. And you only turn a little bit at a time. Turning too much will give you points again. And sometimes you might need to reduce that seam allowance. So, you know, just cut it a little bit more if you feel that's what you should do. And there we go. And just a little bit more. There we go. That's it. Okay. So you've got a nice point and you've got a nice curve. 